Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to look at the tuple class from the C++ standard template library. And the big thing here is that a tuple is a container that allows you to hold multiple values of different types. These can be useful when you need a simple, quick, easy way to group values together and you don't want to have to write a complete structure declaration for it. So we'll look at ways that you can create tuples. We'll look at ways of retrieving values from tuples. We'll see how we can modify the contents of an existing tuple. We'll see how to assign one tuple to another. We'll look at how to swap tuples, unpack tuples, and return a tuple from a function. So let's go ahead and get started. Now to use tuples, we're going to have to include the tuple header file. And then once we've done that, we can start creating tuples in a couple different ways. So create tuples. So we'll use the keyword tuple and we'll specify in these angle brackets here, the types of data that we want to store. So maybe an int, maybe a float, and maybe a care for this example. They can be all different data types or the same. Once we've created a variable for that, then we're going to assign to it the results of the make tuple function. And inside these parentheses, we're going to specify the values we want to store in our tuple as an argument. So maybe we'll do 5, 3.14, and maybe C. Okay, so that's one way we can do it. Another way we can do it is to combine those two steps. We could just use the auto keyword to do this. We could say like T2 equals make tuple. And then I'll put in you know, another value here. I'll say A and then one and then 2.2, right? So this kind of combines it all into one step here, right? A single, single declaration. So we're assigning and defining at the same time. So this is a single initialization. And if we want to retrieve values, from our tuple, then we're gonna use the get function. So let's say we wanna get that first integer from our T1 tuple. So we'll do something like this. We'll say int i equals get, and then inside of ankle brackets, an index for that position within the tuple, and that starts at zero. And then in the parentheses here, we're gonna put the name of our tuple, okay? So we can do that for the first position and we can do that for the subsequent positions as well. So the second thing we had in tuple T1 was a double and the third thing we had was a care, right? So we'll put get two and get one. So the first position, the second position and the third position. And then just to show you that that works, we'll print out the contents of our variables here. And you're gonna see that we were able to store the values and also to retrieve the values. So there they are. So this is how we are retrieving values by index, but we can also retrieve values by type. So retrieve values by type. So if we wanted to get the character out of our T2, we could do something like this. We could say C equals get, and then in these angle brackets, we'll specify the data type, and then we'll place inside of the parentheses here, the name of the tuple that we want to retrieve the value from, and then you'll see that we can display that on the screen as well. So we're gonna be able to retrieve values in a couple of different ways. Now, we don't have to store the value returned directly into a variable. We could just as easily send it straight to C out. So let's say that I wanna get the uh, int out of T2 this time, then I can just send that straight to C out and I don't have to use a variable. So then you can see uh, there it is right there. Now, what if I want to change the value in one of my tuples or one of the values in one of my tuples, then I'm gonna use get again, but I'm gonna use it in a different way. So we're gonna modify an existing tuple. So let's say that I wanted to change that uh, character in my second tuple right here, right? So inside my T2. So what I'll do is I'll do get, and the character was in the first position, right? So we're gonna do get zero, and then we're gonna specify T2, because that is the tuple that I wanna change. And then I'm gonna assign to it, and use the assignment operator, and let's change it from A to B. We'll just change it to B. And once we've done that, let's get the value out and show us that it actually worked. So get zero uh, T2. Okay, so we should see now that it's uh, B, and you can see that it, that is in get back the case. Now let's see how we can assign one tuple to another. So we'll do auto T3 
equals make tuple. And this time we'll just make a tuple that has two members, say two integers, one and two. And then when we do that, we have to specify, you know, when you're assigning one tuple to another, they have to have the same type of values that they're storing and the same number of values. So we'll do tuple int int t4, and then we can do this t4 equals t3. So that's going to assign the tuple created here. Copy of it will be assigned to t4. So if I do C out get zero t3 and get one t3 we're going to see that they're both going to be the same so we're going to do t3 and t4 showing the contents of those tuples so you can see there's the one and then there's the two now we can swap the contents of a couple of different tuples and we'll see how we can do that using the swap method but you can also use a constructor when you're creating a tuple too so let's do tuple oh int 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 and we'll call this tuple t5 and we'll assign to it eight six seven five and then we'll create a second tuple that has four integers and then we'll do um three zero nine one and we'll call that guy T6. And then we'll sw do a swap between these two. So what we'll do is we'll do T5.swap T6. And then I'll swap the value between the two. And so then we'll see that by displaying the contents of T5. First, yeah, just the first element should be enough to show that that worked. So what are we going to see after this? We are going to see three because we swapped the contents of the two tuples so t5 went from containing eight six seven five to containing three zero nine one and then you know we'd see that t6 is going to have had its value swapped too so t6 has now got the the uh, eight six seven five now the next thing we want to talk about is unpacking a tuple and unpacking a tuple that just means that you're retrieving all the values from a tuple at once so unpacking a tuple so the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the tie function or we're going to use um, a technique called structured binding. So tie or structured binding. So let's see what tie looks like. Tie will create a couple of our variables first to store the values we want to unpack. So we'll do int w, x, y, z. And then I'll call this tie function and I'll pass as arguments to it, the W, the X, the Y, and the Z. And then I'll assign to that the name of my tuple, which is gonna be T6 for this example. That's gonna put the values inside the W, X, Y. So then we'll do a C out, W, X, Y, and R, Z. And we'll see that that worked just fine. All right, so there's the 8675. Now let's take a look at unpacking using structured bindings. So we'll use this auto keyword here and we'll have square brackets. And then we're gonna place inside of here some variable names. So we'll do W1, X1, Y1, Z1, and we'll assign to that our T6 tuple. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna create four separate variables named W1, X1, Y1, Z1, and then assign to those variables the values in our tuple. So we'll see that in action here. We'll just display the contents of these new variables and we'll see that the values were in fact copied over. So there we go, the 8675. Now let's finish up by writing a function that returns a tuple. So we'll go up here and we'll just have this function return a tuple that contains two integers and we'll call the function foo. We'll ask the user for the integers. So we'll do something like C out, enter two integers, then I'll read those in and then we'll create our tuple that we want to return. Call this T equal make tuple and we'll pass X and Y as the arguments and then we'll just return our T. We'll go ahead and use that structured binding here to retrieve the values. So I'll do something like auto num1 num2 equals foo. Since I'll be mixing cn and cn.get, we're gonna need a cn to ignore here. So then let's go ahead and print out the num1 and the num2, and let's test it. So enter two integers, eight and six. And so then you can see there's the eight and six. So that's what a function looks like that will return a tuple. And here's how we can retrieve the values from that tuple. Now we could also, another example of this is we could just remove that part and then simply return what make tuple creates. So we can do that. 
And we can also come in here and then assign to a brand new tuple. I will call this new tuple. Okay, what is returned by foo. And then we can print out the contents of that new tuple like we did before with get. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can do this, right? So new tuple, and we want the second value to be displayed on the screen as well. So, you know, whichever way you need to do it, you do it. There's all kinds of different options that you have. So you can see that that works just the same or just as well, just another way of doing it. So taking what was returned by the foo function and assigning it to a new variable and in our return statement, what's different is we just returned make tuple. So there you go. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. What did we talk about? We talked about the tuple class in the C++ standard template library. We saw how we can create tuples, how we can assign values to tuples, change the contents of tuples, how we can return tuples from functions. As usual, if you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the content in this video or any of the videos in our courses, feel free to stop by Zoom office hours or send me an email through Canvas. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.